Okay, welcome. Today I am going to show you how you can set up your own portable tracker device, uh, something like the Dirty Wave Mate, uh, for around 70 British pounds, which is about 92 US dollars. Um, now, a few caveats, if this isn't going to do everything that the mate can, um, it's got some pros and cons compared to that. We'll get into those in a bit more detail in a minute. But firstly, a really quick overview of trackers. I'm guessing that if you've come here, you already know something about trackers. Um, but essentially, in the early days of music production, trackers were a big deal. They ran well on older hardware, which is what makes them ideal um, be running on modern sort of um, low power portable devices and here's a pretty cool YouTube video on the history of them if you want to check that out from a channel called Ahoy. Um, so the tracker that we're going to be using for this project is called Little GP Tracker. Here's the website. I don't think it's actually under active development um, but it's, it's a really cool little tracker and it still runs very well. We're not actually going to use the download file from here because there's a slightly better version for our purposes, but we'll get into that a little later. Um, little GP Tracker is based on LSDJ, or Little Sound DJ, which as it says here is a very famous tracker for the Game Boy platform. Now the Game Boy version, you basically do chip tune. Um, it's pretty much a couple of square waves or pulses, um, don't quote me on that, and, and super basic kind of wave files, but not proper sampling and limited channels due to the hardware of a Game Boy. We can actually go uh, quite a bit further with this version because this can handle full stereo samples and multiple channels uh, and quite a bit of complexity. Um, yeah, Little Sound DJ, there's still an active website, you can find out a bit more about it there. And actually, in terms of actually using Little GP Tracker, which I'm not going to cover today, um, if you want to find out about that, there's not a lot of tutorials around. There is a, a guide which I'll link to, um, a PDF guide in fact, uh, quite handy printable little booklet. Um, but if you want a bit more in depth, the best way is to look at LSDJ tutorials because it's really similar. The main difference I've found is that where on LSDJ you use the select button on, um, on Little GP Tracker, it's for the left shoulder pad. But here's um, a tutorial I recommend and I'll link to this in the description as well. Um, this is by Om Nom Nom, but based on an original tutorial by Sabre Pulse. Okay. And yeah, so the Dirty Wave Mate, um, super desirable but hard to get hold of at the moment. It is also based on Little Sound DJ. So this is why we can we can kind of use that, um, that open source base to get something similar here. Now, it's not going to do everything that the Mate does, as I mentioned. Um, in particular, there's no um, true synthesis on Little GP Tracker, although you can use single cycle waveforms and apply filters and tables and stuff to make them a bit more interesting. Um, and the effects are limited as well. Um, I'm not actually completely sure what the, the Mate offers, but I'm pretty sure it's less on the, on the GP Tracker. Um, you do have filtering, low pass, high pass, you do have, um, well obviously you can do tracker style delays, can't really do a reverb unless you do a, a kind of super fast re-triggering type of thing, but um, there's still a lot I need to find out myself, actually I'm quite new to it. Okay, but that's enough about the preamble, uh, let's get into how we actually go about setting this thing up. So first of all the hardware. Um, Little GP Tracker actually runs on quite a few platforms. Um, GP2X handhelds, Kanu, 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 Keanu, um, the PSP, which is an interesting one, and Dingu. So I'm actually using a variation of the Dingu firmware, but not from here, for the device that I'm using, which is this one, Anbenic RG280V. So this is basically a, a games console. It can run a lot of emulated games um, up to and including PlayStation 1. Um, and I have also tested it on this, which is a similar model, a little bit more beefy and um, got the, the analog joysticks. It works on both of these. Whether or not it works on some of the other Ambonic models that you can see here, 
I don't know. I imagine it might well do, but I, I certainly wouldn't guarantee it because I haven't tested it myself. Okay, so um, that's your hardware. Um, for, for one, I really like using is this. It's very lightweight and it's truly portable, but it can fit in your trouser pocket. This one, not so much really. It's quite a nice device and you've got those uh, those sticks there, but it's not quite as portable and it's, it's a bit heavier. Okay, so what about actually installing the firmware, installing the samples and getting everything working? Okay, you're going to find if you buy one of these that it comes with a 64 gig um, SD card. Well, technically there's two SD cards. You can just about see the slots here. One of them is for your firmware and you don't need to remove that. Um, but you will need to change some files on it and that's a 16 gig card. The other one is, uh, is where you put your game ROMs and also where I would recommend you store your sample files because obviously 16 gigs is not a lot of room to start storing samples. And then depending on how many ROMs you actually want to keep on here, you may also want a bigger SD card. I did. I got myself a 256 gig one, which means I can have tons of game ROMs and I can also have tons of samples. Um, it's up to you. Obviously, you can have fewer games and samples and just make do with this one. But if you do want uh, a bigger SD card, there's a really important step, which I didn't realize, and I, I spent hours transferring samples and then had to delete them all and do it all again because your SD card here must be in FAT32 format. And FAT32 is actually not the same as XFAT. Um, they are somewhat interchangeable um, in some situations, but not for this device. It must be FAT32. And the default Windows formatter is not going to let you format a 256 card to FAT32. So there's a few different programs you can use. This is the one I did, uh, I got, it's called it's just called FAT32 Format. I'll put a link in the description. It's, um, yeah, FAT32 Format GUI from allo4d.com. Um, okay, so having formatted your car correctly, you then need to set up a file structure. Oh, obviously, if you've, you, you would have wanted to back up your ROMs first before you start. So here's my backup folder. Um, here's for the ROMs that came with the game device and of course you could add your own ROMs as well if you wanted to. Um, and all of these other folders apart from the LGBT one came with the device. So once you formatted your new SD card correctly, copy those files back, copy those folders back and then create a new folder for your samples and your save files for the, uh, the tracker. Now I've given it this name, you can obviously call it anything you want, um, but we'll be referring to that later. Okay, now we also need to update the actual firmware on the device. And I'm just gonna plug in the device by USB. Now what I found is you actually can't access the SD card with a firmware by just removing the card and putting it in an SD card reader. And they discourage this, they've put a sticker over the, the slot. But I broke off a sticker and tried it anyway, but actually, yeah, that doesn't really work because all the files in there are SquashFS, sort of compressed Linux files. So you probably could access them if you know what you're doing, but it's, it's not really the way you want to do it. Instead, slightly strangely, what you need to do is access by FTP. Um, so even plugging in a USB cable, you can't just see it pop up in Windows Explorer, unfortunately. So if you're on Windows, I would recommend FileZilla, which is this program. So to connect to your uh, Ambenic, you need the host name, which is 10.1.1.2. Username is root. You won't need a password if it's being configured correctly and then you press quick connect, you get this little warning, which is fine, just press OK. And there we go, we're now seeing um, the kind of root of a file system on the Ambenic gaming device. And what we're interested in is the apps folder here. Now, most of these are default apps that come with your Ambenic, but what we need to do is add the LGPT 
application file and I'll put a link again to this in the description but I recommend not actually getting it from the little GP tracker website um, there's a link here on Dingunity the Dingu community um, for this release which seems to work better I found so download that have it somewhere on your file system navigate to there and then to upload it you just double click it here and it will transfer I'm not going to overwrite it now just, I'm pretty sure it's the same one but double click and it will upload to there and as soon as that's done that's fine that's created now the first time you run this it should create a file in uh, I just keep going back to the root it should create a file in the home folder .lgpt which is where the config settings are stored so I would probably recommend you know before you look for this just open up the app on your Ambernic that you've just dragged up um, just to check it works as well and it should create this folder if for some reason it doesn't you could create it manually here um, okay so if we open up that folder this is one I've already installed so this is almost for default it's got an extra test song file that I did to start with in it I think but what we're interested in right now is the config file okay because we need to um, we need to point the sample library away from this default one and to the one that we've created earlier on our SD card so we need to edit this now don't do the default in um, FileZilla review edit because it's important that this gets edited in a um, sort of Unix compatible editor so download it um, to your you know home folder and open it in something like this program edit pad light or you could use um, Vim, you could use Notepad++ is probably the most popular one. Something that can cope with um, saving Linux file and en uh, line endings properly. Okay, so what we're actually looking at here is... Uh, that's my Windows config actually, that's not what we want. So... Okay, so this is actually my config file. Um, it's pretty simple XML config slash config and then the various values you can have in between um, these background colors are optional the defaults actually quite nice it's a kind of dark brown orange scheme but you can fiddle with that and change the hex values if you want to um, but the important thing from our point of view is these two here the root folder and the sample lib uh, folder now if you've created your file structure exactly as I have then you can use this line otherwise you'll need to obviously change the, the folder name at the end just be a little bit careful to copy uh, or, or write this down exactly we've got a quote at the beginning we've got a quote after the final forward slash and then we've also got a, another forward slash there which kind of closes the, um, the actual tag like on the other ones and then copy this exactly the same sample lib value equals quotes root colon close quotes forward slash to close the tag dumper then you don't actually need that's a logging thing um, so don't worry about that okay so having done that we've now installed LGPT we've hopefully got it running and we've created um, uh, we've pointed it to our custom sample folder so hopefully you put a couple of uh, folder a uh, couple of samples already in your test folder sorry hmm. so hopefully you already put um, a couple of test samples into this LGPT files folder so you can test it. If you haven't, I'd probably recommend just doing a couple of small waves first rather than um, doing tons and tons of them. 
Um, but if you're happy with that, you can then start copying over your 100 gigabyte of samples or whatever you like. Okay, so the final thing we might want to do is um, actually render down our files. Now, um, there's a few ways you can do this, and the simplest is just to plug the, the headphone output of the Ambonic straight into your sound card, but obviously then you don't have separate tracks. Um, if you do want separate tracks, it seems to work fairly well. The method I use is to install it on your Windows machine or Mac or Debian. I haven't used either of those, so I can't really go through that, but the Windows 32 one here does actually work on Windows 64 as well. And in this case, I would recommend downloading it from the official Little GP Tracker website. And once you've done that, it just installs to a folder like this. Um, and the executable's inside the bin folder. So you can run it from there, you can pin it to your taskbar afterwards if you want. And you get this tiny weeny little display, um, and you have to actually navigate it using effectively like a joypad, but with your with your Windows keys, you use the cursor keys to move around and you use an A and B key to, to select, just like you're on a handheld. So, you know, it's not, it's not really set up for PC use um, in the same way as something like Renoise or even Fast Tracker or whatever, where you can make full use of the keyboard. But it does work. And the most important thing for our purposes is that we can use this to render a song that we've made on the handheld. So you take the save file from the handheld and you transfer it over to here. Like other trackers, the handy thing is that it includes the samples with it. So this, for example, is one of the save files that I did as a test. You just uh, copy the folder across from your SD card and it contains uh, the samples in there. You can actually see I've already done an export for this. So this is the outputs you get. But to start with, you've just got the samples that come with it. So it's all in one. Okay, so let's do a new export. So I'm going to uh, just load a different song. Uh, we'll load this 10K one, which is actually the sort of demo song that comes with um, the GP Tracker. Now, to render, it's kind of like, it's not an option you can just choose in the menu, rendering on or rendering off. You have to have it in the config file. So this is config.xml, just the same as we changed it for the Ambonic. We can change it here, it lives in the bin folder. Again, use edit pad or notepad plus plus or something like that. And again, I've been fiddling with the color scheme just for fun. But the important thing is the render thing here. And file split, that's going to give you a non-real-time export as separate channels. Now you can also do file split RT if you want to do it in real time. And the advantage of that is that you will know when the song's finished, but you might get some performance issues. So try it and see. This way's worked fairly well for me, except that the only problem is you, you're not quite sure how long you've been rendering for sometimes. Anyway, the way I do it is I have this permanent option in the Windows version and I only use the Windows version for rendering. So I make my songs on the handheld, but I don't export them there. I, I take the save file, I put it on here, and I render it from Windows. So let's just render this one. So to render, you literally just play it. There's no special option. And because we've got rendering set in the XML, in the config, it will produce our separate channels. And this is the 10K one, so it should output them into this folder. So let's just hit play on Little Piggy Tracker. And you can see that those channels are getting generated straight away. And the song is kind of playing, but it's not really playing in real time. But you can watch the arrows as it plays down your song. So when you're happy that it's completed, um, just press uh, stop. And that's it. You've now got your saved WAV files and you can now open your DAW of choice, like Reaper, for example. And you can simply um, drag and drop. Your files in. 
and there we go. Um, a nice separate render and we can now mix, we can apply effects, we can add extra VST instruments or real-time recording or whatever we like. So it's a pretty cool combination. Okay, I think that about covers it. Um, yeah, I don't think it's really going to be um, the Dirty Wave Mate killer because obviously there's quite a lot of setup involved. It doesn't have all the features of the Dirty Wave Mate. And let's face it, it's just not quite such a sexy setup. But actually, there are some advantages. Um, certainly the model I'm using, the 280V, is actually smaller than the Dirty Wave Mate. It's a truly pocket-sized device. It's reasonably cheap. Um, and you can play a ton of games on it. So from that point of view, it's actually slightly better. Um, so swings and roundabouts. But yeah, hope you found this video useful, guys. Um, please give me a like and a subscribe if you did. And um, if you want to put any questions in the comments, I will do my best to answer them.